Hello world, I'm Nick, and today we're going to look at encoding and decoding data in Base64 in C Sharp. First of all, before we start, please don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe to this channel if you find these videos useful. So what is Base64? Well, Base64 is a binary to text encoding that allows you to translate binary data into text. And the use case for this primarily is for moving binary data around in systems that usually support text. So for example, SMTP, the protocol for sending emails, if you attach uh, files to an email, in the headers of that email, that data is encoded as text, in this case, base64. So what we do is we take the binary data, the actual bytes of the files that we want to encode, and then we turn that into a base64 encoding that can be then decoded on the other side back into binary data. So what I'm going to show you is a very, very simple example of taking a string of text turning it into bytes and then turning those bytes into base64. Then I'll take that base64 string, turn it back into bytes and then turn those bytes back into the original string. So we're going to start off with our demo console and here we're going to import the system.txt namespace and we're going to use this for our encoding. So first of all we're going to use our initial string. So we're going to say pre base64 equals Hello world. Okay, so that's our string. And what we're going to do is turn that into base64. In order to do that, we need to turn it into bytes. So we need to get the actual binary content of this string. The way we do this is by using the system.txt namespace. So we're going to create a variable called message bytes. And this is going to hold the binary content of our hello world string. And we do this with encoding, which is a member of the system.txt namespace in .NET. I'm going to use uh, the encoding UTF-8 because it supports most special characters. And then we say dot get bytes, passing in um, one of 12 different overloads. But for this, we're going to pass in a string. So we'll pass in pre base64. So the result of this is a byte array containing the binary data that we had in our pre base64 string. Awesome. So we've converted that to binary. Now we can convert that into base64. So we'll create another variable called encoded message. And this is going to be our message bytes converted into base64. So we say convert, which is part of the system namespace. It's a static class. And then we say to base64 string. So C Sharp gives us a very handy conversion method that we can use to convert that binary into not just a string, but a base64 encoded string. So you can see here it says it converts an array of 8-bit unsigned integers to its equivalent string representation that is encoded with base64 digits. So we'll pass in message bytes, and there we go. So if we wanted to step through this, what we should see is our initial message turned into binary data and then turned into what will to a human look like gibberish because it's just an encoded string. So I'll put a breakpoint there, start the console, and you can see here when we look at encoded message, there it is. It's pretty meaningless to us. But if we were to take this and put it through a base64 decoder, so we've got a base64 decoder here at base64decode.org. I'll paste in that base64 press decode, and you can see it goes back to hello world. So this again is encoding. It's different to encryption. It's not the same thing. What we're doing is turning this into a different representation of the original data and then decoding that back into the original data. So with encryption, you can't do that without some sort of key. But with encoding, we can turn the data back into its original form. So what about if we want to then decode this data back to its original string? Well, first we can create a variable for it. So we can say decoded bytes, and that will be convert dot from base64 string. So this is the beauty of using uh, C sharp with this system.txt namespace. It gives us all these really helpful functions that we can use to facilitate these pretty complex conversions. So decoded bytes will be a byte array, and then we should then be able to convert that back into our original string. And again, we do that using the encoding class. So we could say original message equals encoding. Again, UTF-8 is the character set that we want to use, and then get string. 
passing in the bytes, which is decoded bytes. And there we go. And what we should see at the end of this is our original message. So I'm just going to step through from the beginning so you can see the whole process unfold. So we'll start our console. We've got our pre-base64, which is hello world. So we can see here is our byte array with the message bytes. We then look at the encoded message, which is the base64 string that we saw earlier. Decode that back into bytes and then get the string from those bytes. And we have hello world. So you can see there we very quickly and easily encoded something as base64 and then decoded it as base uh, from base64 to bytes and then the original string. I've used this uh, in a lot of cases where I've needed to transport data between uh, various systems. So for example, I was using a REST API to pass in uh, obviously payloads in JSON uh, and one of the properties itself was JSON for use outside of that context. And I didn't want to have to escape all the JSON inside that properties value. So I said, okay, I'm just going to encode that as base64. And then when I need it, I can then decode it. It doesn't matter. I can just store it and decode it later. The other benefit of base64 is that if you want to send data into an API without having to stream that binary data, say if you're uploading a file or something like that, you can then encode the binary data as base64, send that into the API, and the receiving API can deal with that base64, decode it back into the data, say it was an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, it could decode it to the bytes and then save it again in the original Excel format. So it really is a fantastic way of transporting binary data as text. If you found this video useful, please again do leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you soon for some more handy .NET tips and tricks. See ya.